We actually already touched on this. Uh, we talked about microgrids. Obviously, micro nanogrids are part of the smart grids. Essentially, they correspond to what requirements are needed for uh, managing distributed energy generation because of solar and wind and bioenergy and geothermal and all sorts of renewables and also to manage what is called dispatchability where the the uh, renewables many of them are intermittent sources because sun uh, doesn't allow us to decide when he's going to shine and wind is going to blow when it does so you need uh, to meet the demands when people turn on all the ACs or uh, computers or TVs or whatever else and how do you meet that surge in demand so smart grids allow flow of energy both ways and then have many smart ways of monitoring the use making certain uh, suggestions judges uh, judgments decisions etc uh, this is from the, the book uh, smart grids are complex systems comprising numerous parts they have no hard and fast rules obviously but smart grid pioneers such as South Korea have helped to define three essential components high voltage power lines equipped with sensors to monitor and report on conditions and multi-directional flow this is very critical users can be put, uh, putting in energy when they have access or taking energy when they have when they need energy and don't have enough uh, or they don't have uh, solar and wind available advanced meters that can wirelessly communicate electricity consumption and pricing in real time to both utilities and end users web connected appliances so internet of things kind of idea plugs and thermostats that can respond to the need to reduce consumption or use available electricity so people uh, can be given a small hint that the, re the demand is too much so can you increase your AC temperature by setting by one degree or uh, change your refrigerator setting and so on and adjust the user end of the demand uh, to match the uh, change in the supply uh, so this is just a, a schematic in the book that uh, I put in and you can see how again it's going to be about collecting massive amounts of data to uh, and using real-time data analytics AI ML and uh, techniques such as these to optimize the grid uh, from the utility scale power generation and the distributed energy generation from solar wind and others <coughs> From the smartgrid.gov uh, of the US, we have the benefits associated with the smart grids that grew, include more efficient transmission of electricity by managing the bidirectional flow and demand and supply, quicker restoration of electricity after power disturbances because you have the grid that is not able to disconnect from the main grid and reattach depending on how the power disturbances are propagating or where it's happening, reduced operation and management costs for utilities and ultimately lower power costs for consumers one of the main goals reduced peak demand so just manage the supply and demand in such a way that you essentially reduce the peak demand and uh, prevent people from jumping on the grid uh, just based on little uh, increase in uh, temperature or uh, other weather conditions like snowfall which will also help lower electricity rates increased integration of large-scale renewable energy systems so distributed energy systems uh, at uh, user scale or utility scale better integration of customer owner power generation systems uh, including renewable energy systems and of course improved security overall to external perturbations uh, intentional or unintentional uh, disturbances propagating into the system this is from the EU uh, talking about smart grids the smart electrical grid enabling a two-way uh, flow of electricity and data so again data comes in just like autonomous vehicles which have to communicate with other cars with the traffic system with the weather with um, their own uh, 
paths and so on and so forth. <clears throat> so a smart grid is an electricity grid enabling a two-way flow of electricity and data including various operations uh, and energy measures such as smart meters, smart appliances and renewable renewable energy resources and energy efficient resources. Um, by 2023, 65 percent of electricity companies will have invested in digital technologies and platforms to support flexibility services, uh, thereby activating a load potential of up to 35 percent installed capacity. I'll show an IEA, uh, International Energy Agency, figure about how much investment has already happened in these various systems. Uh, the benefits of a smart grid include improved efficiency and reliability of electricity supply, integration of more renewable energy into existing networks, supporting the development of electric vehicles at scale. So they can also be taking energy off peak hours and putting energy when they are not expecting to drive. So they can be uh, contributors to local uh, microgrid for example. New solutions for customers to optimize their electricity consumption and reduction of carbon emissions. This is the figure from the same site. Uh, staying big or getting smaller. So grids right now are uh, this way where you have few large power plants could be nuclear, hydro, coal power uh, and so on. Uh, mostly centralized and mostly national grids based on large power lines and pipelines for production, market, transmission, distribution and consumer. So there is the passive uh, paying customer with no ability to contribute or optimize too much the electricity, electricity uptake and so on. Whereas tomorrow's grid, smart grids are expected to have distributed production, many small power producers, decentralized and ignoring boundaries instead of centralized national. Uh, this can imagine, one can imagine even international grids where there are friendly neighbors, of course. Um, in the transmission will include small scale transmissions and regional supply compensations and distribution will be in both directions and the consumer will be active participating in the system with local storage, local energy generation, local contribution to the grid when possible and so on and so forth. This is from Bending the Curve, the other course I have on my YouTube channel and I mentioned in the uh, microgrid section of the uh, discourse. Uh, so this is the uh, classic electric grid again uh, with central generation with various methods, uh, centralized uh, grids supplying to industries, commercial uh, buildings and uh, residences. Uh, whereas the smart grid is uh, imagined as having distributed generation and central generation uh, as well with renewables uh, adding uh, biogas and other and users uh, at residential scale also having their own generation and uh, storage. Okay, so this Tiger Station I screwed up last time as well so let me add that here. Okay, so Tiger, sorry about the screw up last time, is a uh, transmission integrated grid energy resource. Okay, so that's transmission integrated grid energy resource. So it's kind of a local grid that's going to disconnect from the main grid. So you have a uh, Tiger station here and uh, this is an imagined to be a storage system like a battery system. Okay, so they can be uh, giving you a buffer There are uh, plants called peaker plants which are typically used in the old system to kick up energy supply when there is a sudden increase in demand and those are typically very dirty fossil fuel uh, plants because they need to be immediately turned on and start kicking out power to the grid. So here is an example from the US 10 metropolitan regions burdened by fossil fuel peaker plants. So various cities, metropolitan regions, number of peaker plants, total capacities, not trivial, uh, age, uh, average age, which means they are really, really old systems when we didn't worry so much about uh, drawdown and fossil fuel consumption and emissions and so on. And 
and average annual hours of operation again a significant number of hours during which peaker plants are turned on so this site basically calls for shutting down all the peaker plants and the idea of a smart grid is that it's not going to require peaker plants but it's going to manage supply and demand in a way that users are actively told that they are uh, demanding energy at the wrong time and how they could manage their demand by turning off uh, equipment or turning down the thermos turning up or down the thermostat depending on the season and so on and so forth basically it's making uh, investments <coughs> in measuring data and adjusting demand and supply. So this is from the Inter uh, International Energy Agency looking at investment in smart grids by technology uh, area uh, between 2014 and 2019. So it's looking at the uh, rest of the networks but power equipment, smart meters, smart grid infrastructure, uh, electric vehicle chargers and share from digital grid infrastructure. I just wanted to show that there is a thought be being given to smart grids already and there is a significant uh, investment happening. This is just showing percentages, uh, but you can see, for example, uh, smart grid infrastructure and EV chargers uh, and power equipment are already significant fraction with the rest of the networks uh, dropping, indicating move towards uh, smarter grids. If not smart grid, at least they are moving towards smarter grids. Okay, so smart grids, a great coming attraction.